start recording. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll wait until people join and stuff. Let's see if this is going to be a huge train wreck. Yay! So sounds like fun. It's going to be super Woo! fun. Yeah. Feel free to like chime in and stuff because it's just going to be typing <laughs> and messing around with stuff. Um. Yeah. Let's wait until people join and stuff. Yeah, I guess I got like massive FOMO from everyone going to GDC. A bunch of people in my company are going, and I'm like, well, I want to do something, something. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I feel a bit of the same. There's a lot of talks I would have liked to see and stuff like that, but yeah, if you can't go to the talks uh, you want to see, you just make your own. Like that's how it's <laughs> just just make it up. <laughs> I just love how rapidly we all <laughs> jumped onto it. <laughs> I, I've been really, really happy about that too. I was really surprised. I was like, "Hey, how about zero notice? Like three days? Does anyone like just make stuff up next week?" And yeah, there's a, a bunch of people have been like, "Yeah, sure, I've got some stuff." Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm excited. Hello, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I guess I can start running with this then. Um, welcome to the not talk. Everyone, um, I, I guess like I one of the things I was going to talk about in this is like I, I, the thing I found really hard when I first started doing Unreal Dev is I was like, okay, what if you want to make a new like widget from scratch? Um, and it it's kind of like I guess obvious now, but the um, yeah, like the yeah, like the where do we where do you even start, right? So if I go. Basically, I ended up just going to like the editor and finding uh, like an Unreal um, widget that already exists and just copy pasting that. <laughs> like, and this is kind of just going to be that of like, how do you start doing something like that? Um, so, the most simple one I think I was going to start with today is just do like image. So, every UMG widget has like an, uh, a slate widget underneath. Like, I think a lot of this might not be new for some people, but like for other people, it, it might be. So this is the UMG side of stuff. It's exposed in this UMG API. So if we go and find, they always called like my widget. Oh no, it's not called my widget. That's image. Oh, my image. Okay. <laughs> okay. So it's a slate, it's a slate image. So this is the, the slate child thing that's contained within the UMG widget. Um, and it's a leaf widget. So as far as I remember, there's like, widget can have like a slate widgets are either a leaf widget or a container widget I think so if we look for public s widget I think what do we got it's a weak widget you got some text stuff there compound widget okay maybe that was the one I was thinking of then there's a bunch of stuff that are compound widget oh wow yeah there's tons of stuff <clears throat> but for like something that doesn't have any children Widget is leaf widget is just like really simple, and so that's usually oh wow even an overlay is a leaf widget. No, I thought leaf widgets can't have children. Am I wrong? S mesh widget. Yeah, so there's no slots for children. Anyway, right. So uh, I'm literally just gonna like find this and then copy paste it. So <laughs> let me see if I can find it. Uh, where is it? Open in. Explorer. <clears throat> so I copy this and paste it into my project and then I'm gonna just like rename it and then we're gonna like add stuff to it. Uh, this is like classic Unreal stuff for me. It's just like finding something you like and stealing it and then modifying it to do what you want to do and then after that once you sort of understand how it works then you can start doing stuff uh, from scratch a bit more. I mean this is really like just the Dummy's first way of doing it. I should be showing you what I'm doing in this other panel, but I don't want to show all my files. So yeah, there's <laughs> S image. Uh, you should you could use the public private like folder structure that a lot of things do, but I I do for my my plugins and things, but I just can't be bothered for for small stuff because uh, because yeah, it's too much work. Uh, so we have the slate one, and then we're also going to need the UMG one. Uh, where are you? 
Yes, it's being recorded. Okay, so where are we? Oh my goodness, image. This is what happens when you have zero preparation. Okay, image.h and image.cpp. Yeah, I'm recording this. Uh, okay, so let's call it super, something fun like, I don't know, my image. No, that's really confusing. Let's call it buoy. I always do buoy everything. Buoy, buoy. Oops. S buoy. S buoy. Let's see if this thing's noticed it. File system. No index. Please index these. Okay. I'm really bad at just like renaming stuff. But yeah, literally I'm just like gonna rename it all and then see if it compiles. <laughs> oh yes, please. I don't want that to be. Buoy image, buoy image. Yup. Goodness. You could subclass this. I mean that's usually what I would do for some stuff, but like half the time it's like things aren't public. If things aren't protected, they'll be private. How is it in here? This is all public. These are protected. Oh, this is pretty good actually. So we could in theory subclass this if we wanted to just change some behavior. But sometimes I, I there'll be something that's just not public. Uh not not protected. And then I'm just like, well I might as well just like rewrite the whole thing. I might as well just like copy paste it and mess with it. Um in this in this case you probably would want to subclass it. It's buoy image. Oops, that's gonna be wrong. May I ask a question? Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Everybody, everybody jump in. Like I'm this half the time is just me just text replacing stuff. It's like pretty mindless. Ask away. I'm just curious, like what reasons you might have to to want to like inherit from like this widget or make your own version of, of an image widget. Um so this is like kind of a slightly contrived example, but I did actually do it in Industries of Titan. So for this I mean the reason I picked this is just because it's like simple and it just has like a really simple draw function. Um, but in the in industries of Titan, I wanted to do like this kind of parallax layered kind of uh, set of images where you, when you move your mouse, like it all offsets slightly, like kind of like a, a bunch of pieces of paper. Um, in that case, you could maybe, if you inherit, the problem is you can change the functions, but a lot of this slate attribute stuff is not really set up for inheritance. So you're going to get all of these properties. I think you can hide some of them through like editor customization, but it's like, it's not set up for, for like that very easily. So I would probably, I mean, I should hopefully get to this later, but like, yeah, I just end up changing these in, in a custom, like in my copy pasted version. Um, oh, we're going to change the API. Ah, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Oh uh, yeah. Three, not G D C. Um, for other cases, I, I think basically I started by inheriting with a lot of things. If it's like, oh, you, if you just want to change like one, you know, the behavior of one function, like for example, like buttons originally, uh, the default buttons, like if you click on them and they're disabled, it doesn't do a, a callback, but you could like add something like that where you just inherit and add a new callback or something, a new, new delegate. Um, but like the, the other other stuff is like well you might as well just like um make it yourself from scratch we need to check change this so it's using the right image and we also need to forward declare this and change this okay let's try and get it to compile oh it shouldn't be your mg api that should be but not well not g2, g2. Uh oh. Uh oh. I really do wish it were easier to rename things in Unreal. Like <laughs> I do this all the time, even for classes where I get to pick the name. I'm like, oh no, this wasn't the right name. Yeah. And then, <laughs> strong and dance. I'm just. This is like I probably should have done this before because this is pretty boring. But uh, if anybody else has random questions while I'm trying, to like, oh my goodness, you Imogene, did I not rename these? I'll be honest. Uh, it's it's actually pretty validating that you're doing this as well. I mean, <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 
if I was fancy, yeah. I'd be like setting up a Vim macro and get like doing search replace, but half the time it doesn't do quite what I want. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just like doing this, so then I kind of realize like, okay, there's a ton of references to some stuff, and sometimes you'll see like, okay, uh, I need to like look for S image as well. Uh, whoops, this widget. Okay, that's that one. Yeah. Image, so okay, so yeah, we needed to create a, this one, not a regular slate image. I don't, I don't do this very often. <laughs> I've done it for, I basically end up doing like one for each of the. Uh oh, I'm not doing this, am I? Okay, so for this, if I see DLL mess stuff like this, I'm like, okay, first I check, uh, do I have the dependencies here, and then I also try and make sure that the this API stuff is correct. I'm I'm not very smart when it comes to this stuff. Okay, let's just let's just make sure we're including Slate Core and UMG and all the other stuff. I'm sure there's the people who are actually much better at Unreal are like, don't just blindly include a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're command. We're just like making a. It's. I'm trying to make an image where I can have multiple layers and draw them separately. Um, I want to kind of create a custom asset for it with a bunch of like, mm, uh, what do you call it? Like, uh, s uh, slate, no not slate, the brushes, slate brushes. So like a, a slate brush for each asset. Um, and then, hey, compiled. Uh, a slate brush for each, like each layer, and then we'll, we'll just kind of draw them one by one. It's I, it's just kind of, I want to show you part of the, the pieces of, of of like a slate widget. Um, some of the stuff is maybe a bit obvious. So like, for wait, now we've got our running thing. I don't even know if we can see it now, but <coughs> so let's make a user widget. I've got a habit of doing this instead of just doing right click user interface widget blueprint because half the time I wanted to select a different child class, but I think in Unreal 5, yeah, you can choose the parent class now, so my old habit is is wrong. Okay. Oh, wow, even if you hit cancel, it, it continues. That's interesting. Uh, whoops. Low resolution. See if it's actually in the palette here. Any buoy stuff? Yay! Okay. Put an overlay in there. Okay, so it still has all the same properties. So, okay, what do we want to do then? So, first I would look at like how how is it actually drawing this stuff? Um, you can look in UMG and uh, there's as far as I know there's like there's a there's no draw stuff in here if I remember no paint yeah so all of the actual painting and drawing stuff goes on in slate so if we look at the header so first of all you've got these uh, more macro stuff because everything's macros this will tell the kind of arguments that are, you can supply to the slate widget when you create it we'll deal with those a bit later uh, construct you care about. I mean, that's not virtual, but it's like everything has a construct. Um, and then on paint is probably the main one you care about. Uh, I compute desired size is kind of interesting too. Like imagine you have, um, you know, you, you can set widgets to display at their desired size. Well, how does it get calculated? That's That's based on here. So imagine if we have a bunch of layers of images, we could probably pick like the largest one, or maybe the smallest one because we want to clip. So yeah, th th it's a bit different depending on what, what you're actually trying to do. Oh, and there's a bunch of deprecated stuff in here. <laughs> Groovy. Why are people asking the questions? Uh, oh yeah, call redirects. Do -do -do. Okay. So, ooh, flips the image of localization. That's neat. Okay, so let's look at the paint. So to be honest, if you were like, trying to make like a really bare bones widget, you, because a lot of this is you know fancy things like setting image. You could you could delete a half of this stuff. Like as long as you've got construct a constructor, compute desired size and on paint, that's really all you need. 
a lot of these are you know attributes specific to the fact that it's a widget that it's a, in an image sorry um okay so it gets the the brush we're trying to draw is it the right type draw because there's like different types of draw types there's box and there's also no draw type which is i don't know why they have that um so you've got the draw effect stuff where if it's disabled it will draw in gray um this is also where you would want to do we unconst that you can do how do you do multiple ones in this maybe you just pipe equals it this is how you do like your pixel snapping stuff so imagine we're like uh, moving around the layers to follow the mouse you probably don't want it snapping in a weird way so that's how I would do it um, to make sure that it's yeah it's like tweening around in a nice way um, also I hate this I hate the everything going gray when <laughs> when it's like disabled I'd pretty much prefer to do it in a different way but just keep it absolutely like <laughs> okay other people having the same thing yeah um, Oh, and this is like localization stuff as well. So I mean, you can do that. Uh, okay, so I think I want to create a, this our like asset for uh, the layered stuff. So we can call it like layered image asset. I guess it's technically not a data asset right now, but let's just do this. Uh, am I doing this all from hand? Anyone else has more questions? Go ahead. Just FYI, we moved it to a thread um, in the channel. Oh. Or in the, yep. Yeah. Oh. Neat. What's your For profile? For each talk, we just have it condensed. That's way smarter than just being a big flat list. Thank you for doing that. Uh, what's your preferred style for a disabled widget? I would probably just have like a separate part of the asset thing so I'd I'd have like in a button I just have a different state so like you'd have hovered and pressed and you just have another state so like whether if you within there you might be defining like um like all of the different like maybe it's for the text maybe it's for the background image maybe it's even for the sound that happens when you click it stuff like that let's do this for now Oops. Uh, will that work? Probably. So then <clears throat> what we want is we want our image to be able to have this new layer image asset thing as like a property. So if we look at how all the other properties defined, like, oh, okay, so you have, you, you define a slate attribute. I don't know what the difference with slate argument is. Arguments differ from attributes, and they can only be values. An attribute can be a value or a function. Ugh, I don't like the attributes thing. Like, so I think I'll make it an argument. The attributes thing, I think, is the stuff where you have all the, the like the bind um, and things like that. So I think I'll try and avoid that. Yeah, they're they're property binds. <laughs> okay, let's see. Basically, try. <laughs> <Flight> version. <laughs> I get people know a lot more of this stuff than me. Okay. So let's see if we can already included it. That was very helpful. Did it? Yeah, it did. Let's try not including it. See if we can get away with that. Um, oops. This is works. Uh, oh yeah. So if you, because it's all ma macro stuff. Um, You'll probably see that if you don't actually declare all the other stuff related to it, it's going to freak out. Oh, I've got the generated, of course. How would you render a disabled button in this case? Do you want a different behavior than the grayed out one? Yeah. Oh, yes. Aha. Okay, so that's actually a cool question. So if you look at button, I think s button dot h. <clears throat> so in there on paint, we go in here. They have a thing called get border image, and so they actually do it here. Wow. Show disabled effect. Ooh, is this new? 
that's that's a really thing. But yeah, so basically, what they do is they say, okay, if if we're in a, not enabled, then we get the dis the disabled style. Otherwise, we get the the image itself. So it's kind of like just draw use a different image to rend to to render it. Um, what image attribute? Ugh. Not a nice way of doing it. Well, they have a nice way of getting the border image. Update border image. Oh yeah, okay. So this is how it does it. It updates it. So it's just like okay, if we're if we don't show the disabled effect and we're not interactable, then we should be using the disabled uh, slate brush. If it's pressed, we should be using the pressed slate brush. If we're using if we hovered, use the hovered slate brush. Um, so yeah, I'd probably do it the same way as that to be honest. I don't like the fact that the gray effect just kind of like arbitrarily changes everything to gray and it doesn't give you any opportunity to, to update it. What if you want it to be like red when it's disabled? Like you can't, it's too binary. I can understand this being useful in like an editor where you're just like, okay, screw it. It's, it's, it's like imgui. Just get it to run on screen as quick as possible. But, but yeah, for something that's a bit more player facing, I want a little bit more customization, I guess. <clears throat> I was halfway through adding this, wasn't I? Okay, I might compile now. Oh, I should actually complain about this. So if we look at how the other ones define desired size, we should see there's a underscore property somewhere. Oh, it's the same. Nope. Color and opacity aperture. What? What do we have for the property then? Well, for the regular argument, flip left to flip for. Oh, it's just named the same. Let's see if this works. Then this is all macro stuff. It's kind of gross. You just have to like it will tell you when it doesn't compile. But wait, does it like make an underscore one? Yeah, it it automatically will create the underscore one after you've made the macro with the variable type. Okay, so then, but then this underscore. Well, you should be doing the lecture. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> so the the underscore one is like on top of this as well. We have an underscore one and a regular one. Then I guess, like I guess we'll find out. That seems oh, macros. Um, this probably doesn't need to be done. Oh, I guess it does because if it's a u, uh, if it's a u property, then it gets set to null by default. But if it's not, then it it's not initialized. Okay, so we should be doing that. If this actually compiles. Woo. 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 Okay. So then I guess we can see if so by default it shouldn't show up in the UMG editor because we haven't actually added your properties here. So in order to make it exposed to the editor, we still have to add a U property. What we've done is we've so yeah, we can see there's no information about our asset. Let's see if we can actually make one of them though. If we have our layer, layer, buoy layer. It's small. Yeah, so we can start defining our, our layers of like, okay, we want our back layer to be like, I don't know, this thing. Oops. <laughs> I should have like got some like dummy textures or something. Filter by texture. Ah, can't. That's fun. There must be a way of filtering by texture type. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So what have we done? We've 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 added new. Uh, let's go back up here. We've added new a new argument here. And then we need to make sure that we set it up in the body as well. So I usually look at how other ones are being set up. So add member attribute. Oh, good. Thanks for, thankfully not doing attributes. So we don't need to do that stuff. Um, the construct. So we'll ha we should have a new inline. Oh yeah. Okay. So that's what it adds. Okay. So this is basically defining a new struct that's going to get passed in. And so. If we go back to here, these f arguments will 
come in with those underscore properties like initialized for us. So we can do our, uh, what was it called? Image layer thing, layer image, layer image. Layer image asset class will be layer image asset class. So from there we could like, if it was like a soft reference thing, we could like load it properly if we wanted here. Um, and then from here we can like for each through our properties um, our, our like slate brushes uh, and draw them um, from the UMG side we want to we still need to like expose it to UMG um, so if we add it down here add it anywhere yeah oh sRGB equals true I didn't know that was one I called it. I can't remember. So then, the those um, put this over here. Go to our image. This one. So yeah, when you define these things here in the slate begin args area, they basically get added. You can you can now use them here, so we can. Yeah, uh, it should make like a little. Uh, so we, why doesn't that work? Oh, yeah. So now we can pass in. This is the one we're setting in UMG, and we pass it uh, as an argument into these f args that come in here. It's a bunch of like wrapping around wrapping, which is kind of annoying. This is how they're doing their weird asset binding stuff. Yuck. Yeah, because this is doing binding, it's calling these functions. Ew. Basically, I just end up like looking at like examples of like, hey, this is a functionality I want. How do they do it? And then just like copying pieces of it. It's not, I'm not very smart. So that's about as far as I get with these things. It's just knowing that like you can do that and uh, yeah like what each of these pieces do this might we won't do anything different now but like we should be specifying the properties that should compile and then in our draw function we should be able to just like loop through them and draw them in the right order hopefully so on paint i mean we still have our old image attribute we can clean this up another time but like <clears throat> Let's see. Yay. Yay. Oh, we need to make that abstract, so we can't choose that. But yeah, like that's how we've just like exposed a new property in here that should be setting the value in slate so that when we're in slate, we can like use that and loop through stuff. Uh, Anyone have any like questions and things while I'm waffling on? If I can. Uh... So you're specifying the the class in the slate widget. Is that getting instanced at some point? Yeah. And, like, is that happening? Mm -hmm. Sorry, carry on. What's your question? Like... I'm just curious, like, when that's happening, or like, what the memory situation is there. Uh, that's a good question. So I would previously I've like just used the default object because um, it's it should exist when you run the game. So like if you, uh, I was literally just going to type like get default object here. Is that how you work? I can never remember how you do get default object. Get default t is the. Oh yes, thank you. Default this guy. Oop. Yay, and then I can use the class there, is that right? There's a mutable version too, yeah, the one right below it, get, def get mutable default. Oh, okay. In this case, we want yeah. a const one, because we don't really want to change our okay. image assets, so that's, that's good to know, like the mutable one. So in terms of memory, I'm assuming that that should be exist, that should exist like thanks to Unreal's yeah. reflecty thing. 
Um, if you had something where you wanted to store some information, I don't know when you would want to do that. Or if this was like a, a soft, like a soft reference thing, when you'd have to load it. Ugh. I guess I'd probably look at the way that. So it, Common UI has a bunch of like soft references to to images, and then it would like display a spinner until the image is loaded. So I'd probably look at the way they do that. Oh, yeah. For, for now. They uh. From what I've seen, they use like a, an asset loading manager for specifically just the common UI stuff. So like anything that's currently loading is like being managed and tracked. So like when it is finished loading, it just notifies and okay. triggers like, hey, I'm good. So yeah. yeah, from what I've seen. Wow, that sounds useful. It's not, it's not draw any of this stuff. Gross. Is it similar to how the soft loading methods in UImage are currently uh, designed. I haven't actually seen this, the soft loading stuff in UImage. I used them a lot in the past, but Ooh. it doesn't actually make a lot, a lot of sense to me when using very small images. I usually omit the soft stuff. Oh, this stuff like set brush from soft it material? Exactly. Uh, the, the the main problem is if you pass a, a null pointer, uh, it kind of fails because it tries to load it forever and <laughs> never sets it right. Okay. <laughs> okay. And then I guess yeah, while it's loading, it's just like it's just a, a. I guess you'd have to set it to be like invisible or like draw none, and then and then do an asset, like the async load. Otherwise, it would just show white. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, if you, you, you could modify yeah. this mm. and display something instead, because um, you have this weak this reference to yourself, uh -huh. and I mean, you you could add a custom spinner kind of thingy mm. to your to your image and then display it at the beginning. And when you when you uh, get your strong this again mm -hmm. in the in the in the delegate. Yeah. Uh, delegate, not delegate, uh, Lambda. Lambda. You can kind of remove the spinner thingy again and then... Oh, yeah. Because you finished... This could work, but yeah. I, never, I never did this and I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> would, would that also support like putting a uh, placeholder spinner, essentially, would that work by putting in a material in there too um, that could be like an SDF-generated spinner? Oh. You could. I think so. This this okay. could work. Setting setting the the material um without a soft reference, the the spinner material, and then setting the 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 streamed version. Mm. This could work, but right. I I don't think it'll make a lot of sense for stuff that's not from I don't know the internet downloaded right. somewhere. I mean, yep. I don't know how performance is for, yeah, if you were doing mobile or if you're doing like some games consoles, maybe there's some big images where you'd want to, if it's like them flicking through pages over and over and over, but then you'd want to like stop the previously loaded, the thing that's currently trying to load and cancel that and then have to like start a new one up if you're, like imagine you're flicking through yeah. like an enemy manual or something, like an enemy glossary. Uh, this is a good case, yeah. If you, if you have re really high res images for enemies or stuff. Mm-hmm. That'll be a use case, but yeah, I didn't encounter this so far. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't had to deal with that luckily so far. Like, yeah, I guess similar to um, you know, if you're scrolling through like a a store that has outfits or something, and that has um, a spinner yeah. that is essentially existing at the same time as there is an asset already behind it, uh, like a three D asset. So you've got both visible at the same time. You could potentially have two things happening at the same time, where there is an image that is currently loaded, and then you're loading the next one. But you could also do that in callbacks and stuff using UMG and just have two separate layers instead of doing it directly in the, the slate widget. I have to write that down. I need this in the, in the future. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite the same. I was playing uh, Ghost of Tsushima last night, and they, on their um, cosmetic skin preview stuff, clearly they have the mesh in memory, but they're needing to load materials or uh, textures from memory somewhere. Mm -hmm. So they will, they absolutely do slap a, a spinning wheel and then they show the kind of like a ghostly version of the mesh without any color on it mm. behind it. So it's, you can, you can see the mesh of the thing you're going to preview, but it's while it's loading the materials and doing whatever it needs to do, 
which I which is I assume loading it in from disk. Uh, they do slap a spinner on it, so there are absolutely edge cases where where a spinner would be nice. I don't know if the right thing to do is build it into the widget or to catch the places where, like like via some sort of a delegate system, be able to have a separate spinner widget that this is attached to, maybe that's a child of this or something, and have this relay commands down to that extra widget versus building it in, because there are cases, I'm sure, where it's never going to come up for uses. I think I think it would be better just to have a manager managing that and having him delegate down, because then you're not having multiple trying to do this reference count regarding a single asset's like loaded state. It's just everyone's listening to it, everyone's not listening to it because it's not loaded, and if they, they can request it kind of thing, um, if it needs to be loaded. It'd be a lot cleaner, too. <laughs> That's more code architecture stuff in that case. I'm making some terrible placeholder assets so I can like <laughs> just save stuff. Uh, so then I can actually see my different layers. So excuses for that. Uh, layer one. You could also just create three materials with different colors. Oh, yes, that would be better. <laughs> but this is this is beautiful programmer art. I'd appreciate that. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm 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 enjoying it. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's just do two then, and I will do the other ones in in, in other stuff. Okay. Let's see if this is, I'm learning so much. I'm learning so much of like how to actually do quicker stuff while people are actually watching. <laughs> okay. So what I was doing before while uh, people were talking about stuff is I was just copying the make box, which is kind of like one of the core uh, slate drawing functions um, from here. Uh, we don't need to do all the left to right stuff because you know we can add this back in or do it properly if we if we do that in the future. Um, and yeah, just copying the existing stuff. All the uh, geometry will be not great because if we, have, if we use images that are different sizes, we're going to need to like deal with uh, the you know compute desired size stuff. This doesn't really make any sense anymore. Um, we'd have to probably loop through and find the biggest or smallest and then return that. Uh, but like maybe we'll be able to draw some stuff. So that would be cool. Um, let's see, where's our desktop? Desktop. Go. Wonderful. Then in here, okay, we're using our BP layer thing. So we want to set two layers in here. Layer one and two. So, whoa, it's drawing both of them. Yay. Like, d done. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I guess, like, after this, I, uh, in my other one, I was like, in, I added like a tick function. So, over, over time, I was modifying the, the position of the layers so they would, like, pan around in interesting ways. Um, and yeah, you can you can totally do that. Oh, I guess like the most useful stuff is is just knowing that like if you want to add new properties, you need to look into slate begin args and add like matching stuff here and here, and then add it into the uh, when you're doing your construction stuff in rebuild widget. Then you need to add in new properties into here. Um, I guess those are the main ones. Like, I don't really know what else I can do. I could go a bit deeper, but it's not really going to add like a heck of a lot of more interesting stuff. If anybody else have any like questions or interesting stuff we could talk about with about Slate and UMG, um, yeah. Welcome to not GDC where you don't do any preparation and you just like talk about cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Did you show a little bit about like um uh? A slate widget that is more complex that has the has like a slot uh, or children, um, mm. so like a button, for instance. Like, yeah, um, I kind of despise using the, <laughs> you know, oh, just swap the background and like having the padding always having to be overridden and stuff. Like mm -hmm. having kind of a clean base for a button to start from that then um, 
I could maybe add a second slot to for an icon or something, you know, like, so maybe I have an icon button that can have an icon on the left or the right. Mm -hmm. And that changes the alignment of the text. Um, and mm -hmm. it's just sleek driven instead of having to create, because typically I have to make like a custom, um, uh, just widget that is not necessarily, you know, a direct, uh, inheritance from yeah. the button. Um, so let's see. I would basically try and find something that has multiple slots. Like you can have, so as far as I know, you can have like, okay, this has a single slot. And then if we look at like, I don't know, S overlay, uh, let's see how they do slots in there. You have to have your own subclass of slots, but what does it look like in the, there's just one children. Hmm. I don't know how you'd have like two different types of slot, I guess. I guess when I say slot, I'm thinking of named slots. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of imagining like a Slater version of named slots. Like in, if you're doing that just in, in like blueprints, like a user widget, you could totally do that. Um, half the time with this, I'm like always trying to just justify to myself like why, I know I can do it in, in user widgets and then I'm like, okay, why do I need to do it in Slate? Like, if I if it's like a performance issue, mm. or if it's like a sharing between multiple projects kind of issue, or yeah, because like usually, I don't know. I just I just prefer doing stuff in in user widget because I can I can kind of customize things and I can look I can see it more quickly than just like having to mess around in C plus plus. Much as I love C plus plus, like um, I don't know if you can do like multiple. You must be able to do multiple slots in Slate. Let's see, are there any things in here that look like you might be able to do it? I don't think you can do multiple slot types. Okay. But I'm but I'm not sure. Uh I just today I, I scrolled through the is it children header? I, I think it's called children. Oh wow. Where okay. all the slot stuff is defined and um Yeah. Ooh. Children Children dot H, this one. Ooh. Creepy. It's like <laughs> this is oh, this, this is, is huge. <laughs> wow. Yeah, th th this is this is wh when you start from the top. It's basically the the kind of base definition for there are children or there can there can be children. Yeah. To to other widgets, and then you go down the rabbit hole and for all the combinations. Oh wow! No children. Okay, so let's mix in. Oh wow, mix in. <laughs> because you got confused in F slot and F children. Use F single widget children. Oh no. T weak child. Oh no. Content alignment makes sense. Okay, this is. Yep. Take me uh, Yeah, this is basically where I stopped today. <laughs> this is. Uh, if, if, if you go back to those, they're all listed as uh, deprecated in UE5. Oh. That's... They are? <laughs> yeah. They've been renamed. The make sense? Oh, they're just renamed. <laughs> oh. No buff for certification. So it's no longer slot and children. It's just slot. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's a great thing to hear. <laughs> Unfortunately, we are using still 4.26, I guess. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, if you wanted to have like different types of children, then I guess I probably would go with the name slot thing. Like, because then you can differentiate and say, like, okay, just, you know, in. Um, I guess for, for other people, like, if they don't know what we're talking about, like, if you, let's get rid of this for now. Um, if you were making, like, a button, uh, you could have, like, a horizontal box, uh, and then under there you could have, like, by default, I want to have my icon on the left, be like, my, like, icon, slot, and, um, and then I want my text on the right. Maybe like text slot um and then when you make you can make like a button outside that for example say okay make a button outside there put the horizontal box inside um then when you make instances of this in somewhere else so if we let's rename that to be oops let's make that i don't know button and maybe you're making something else called like uh, so I'm doing this again. Oh, force of habit. Uh, so then maybe you've got main menu. 
in here you can you can create instances of your button and you can say okay within the icon slot I want uh, like this widget and in the text slot I want this text then in this situation I'm always kind of like torn between like okay if I know I'm generally going to have an image here like the alternative is to why well, okay so there's slightly there's different ways of doing the same thing if we make an alternate version of this button um, the other way of doing it is just you just straight up have an image in here um, and you have text and then you would expose properties right. to kind of do the same just thing so you would set override on instance yeah, yeah yeah and I'm never sure in one way this is a, this is more of a locked down way of doing it. It's like okay, you only get to text like play with the properties you don't get to actually like put stuff inside um this is more flexible because you know you could say on one example you're like actually I don't want to whoops yeah you don't I don't want to put an icon in here. I want to put an icon wrapped in a border wrapped in a something and you're just like, okay, it will look like an icon, but it's got some cool stuff in it and in text, I actually want two different text widgets wrapped by a horizontal something and a bot and a size something so you can kind of break your own conventions which is good and bad it's like giving giving the often like you're the user at the same time as being the designer i mean it depends on how big your team is like you could be the the designer and everyone else has to use the way you've set up your widgets mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah i'm never really sure with those i i i, I have been it's been the past i've tended towards this because it seemed more likely to have consistency but yeah, there's always mm -hmm. that one case where you're like, oh shoot, I wish I could, <laughs> I could like put two yeah. text boxes in. Like that, that's where I start <clears throat> combining them. So you have the base version, and then you add slots, name slots for if you need to add some overrides. Like I need more buttons on the right or on the left, or oh, yeah. you know, there needs to be a label. So I could either bake those in in this ma in this manner, and then leave options for more just in case mm -hmm. for later. I've done yeah. stuff like that sometimes where I've like, okay, I, halfway through the project, I'll realize like, okay, some of them need like an action and I'll put it in here, but you know, 95% of the time it's hidden, but then you're like making right. all of your buttons <laughs> more complicated for like the 5% of the time you need it. Um, if you do your logic in C++, at least you could make like, a, you could have it be like bind widget optional and have two different subclasses in blueprints. So you could do your logic in there and then yeah you could like have one that has no action text and another one that like does have action text i mean that's that's kind of cool uh yeah name slots are useful sometimes like I, I often use them for things where it's like i definitely know the contents are going to be super generic so i'll use it for like a a background panel of a, a just some generic window so it'll be like okay the background panel has like a bunch of different like images and drop shadows and things like that and then the named slot is just like content and it, it can be anything because yeah something like that uh yeah i don't know if anyone else has any more questions it's like super uh random <laughs> i don't know if it's super useful but uh i might do something else later in the week where i can like do something a bit more structured and i'll prepare stuff <laughs> uh yeah. Anything else? Yeah, have fun at not GDC, everybody. Like, yeah, I like how people are asking cool questions in the in the chat and like suggesting stuff to to talk about and have, um, yeah, more ideas for things to discuss. So have a good afternoon, bye everyone. You too. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, Thanks, Bye. Bye.